This is the Bar Stewards Enquiry. You are talking absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. In, in what way? You are an underachiever in life. You were, I'd see if you were bacon one time. You were gone. Well, I couldn't save you. I, I said, oh, no, but you said the right thing. But well, that's why you don't know anything about racing, John. I, I didn't say I do. Right? I'm saying that... What, what have you contributed to racing? You are one of these take-out merchants. Take out all you can. Hello, warm welcome to the Bar Stewards Inquiry. It's the weekend podcast, and not only is it the weekend podcast, it is the Cambridgeshire meeting and Le, Le France. This is Longchamps, Saturday and Sunday, and it's got surprisingly little coverage uh, in our view as Bar Stewards. We like a bit more of a fanfare to the Arts Art weekend. A bit flat in the media in terms of coverage, and they were late pricing up Saturdays and Sundays races on the telly box on ITV Sunday races. Anyway, we're, we're going to make the best fist of it we can. It's myself, John and Andy. Good evening, chaps. Good evening. <laughs> I can imagine John John sat there in his beret with a string of onions round him. <laughs> can I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's about as French, French as he gets. I think. Uh, oh, no, no, he's just really friendly for that, isn't he? He likes a bit of paint as well, doesn't he? Oh, he does, yeah. He, he actually yeah. does, yeah. He sat outside a cafe, guffing on a galois. <laughs> <laughs> disc blur, I think you'd be more, I think you'd be more a disc blur man, John. Yeah. Just, just one thing before we go on to the best bets round. I was shocked to see. Godolphin have no representatives on Art Weekend. I was going to mention that because the only Godolphin group race runner I can find is the one in the Royal Lodge. Yep. Ablan. Yep. You've got Will Buick who's flying to Belmont on Saturday night to ride a filly in a yeah. Rebel Romance in the, in the summit, summit, summit at Belmont. The summit, yeah. summit. Summit, summit. Is that, is that the, <laughs> like the Gross of Priest run the summit? It's like the Belmont von Belmont, John. <laughs> <laughs> Run on firm though. You don't want older flugs over there. You you just want some Baffert, silver haired Baffert tackle <laughs> and, and some fast ground pedigrees. So Buick's going to Stateside on Cambridge Saturday today. night. Yep. Mm. Wow. Mm. I, I, it's left me in shock. The whole, the whole weekend's left me in shock. I were expecting, but as this like it, is France playing second fiddle to Champions Weekend now, it would appear so. Mm. Wouldn't it? Yes. Mm. Mm. I used to remember Art Weekend used to be the the big the big one, you know O'Brien, uh, Coolmore, the best of the French, all be taking each other on, and just doesn't seem like that this year at all. But anyway, we shall do our best on this show. It's best bets round time, chaps. Uh, this is where myself, John, and Andy will give our best three bets over this weekend's action. John, you can kick us off. Mm. Can I now? You can, please. Really, really kind of you. Yes. Um, 425, Haydock. Mm -hmm. Arkendale has gone from head to head, but he's with a better head now than they said. <laughs> they said he's already got him to stay further than the other head did. He's open to improvement. He was underachieving his heads, but now he's with head. He can fulfill the initial promise that saw him gain a dante entry. 86 looks very workable for me, given how we finished off at Chester last term. Brunch and Enfigy are at the dangers, but this will be worth a uh, half point each way, I think. Mm, just looking at the prices for you. Half point each way, Arkendale, four <coughs> points and one generally available for John. Four places. Are you happy with that, John? Delighted. Lovely stuff. Okay, nice start at 14 to put. I'll kick myself off then in the Cambridge Shire, mm. and it's going to be... Two split half pointers. Uh, it's more nostalgia than anything. Both bet fair SP. I've not prepared to play the the bookies game because if you're back in each way, I would recommend that you play bookmakers prices because obviously they're paying seven places, eight places, six places, all that. Lot. But if you're just doing it like for me, like I'm an exchange player, literally, it's just 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 play on the shows. You, you you'll get better than bookie odds usually, and it's a, it's the two three year olds. I'm excited to see both actually in the race. Sometimes in Cambridge, especially in, when was the last eighty eight three year old that got in the Cambridge? Oh, I know you're the last that. I've looked it up. I know. Well, anyway, that's crack shot. 
and that's George Adobe, and runs off seven stone 13 with her claim. Assuming she's, not, she's, assuming she's not going to print it over, Georgia. Keep off the French fancies tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, fish and chip, no fish and chips tonight. Absolutely, Georgia. Get it right. Make sure you don't swallow, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> you don't swallow them oysters, Georgia. Spit it um, out. <laughs> 12 to 1 crack shot, very progressive. And obviously, I, I think there's a big running Ed Walker's horse still from this mark. Also, the obvious one, Greek order. I know it's 7 or 2 with a book. I know you're thinking, well, you're tipping there. I know. But it, it's, a, it's a good horse. The form stacks up in spades. Look look at the three runs this season. They've already held it in the Irish regard. And you know, you know this horse must have been flying at 2 because Ryan Moore was booked to ride it all the time. Uh, literally every time, Ryan Moore, Ryan Moore, Ryan Moore. And the horse has found its feet all of a sudden, bolted up last time. This could be another Lord North in the wings. Uh, there's nothing not to like. So half a point winner each at Betfair SP, the pair of them. Andy? I'm going to rip off. <laughs> yeah, that's tomorrow fine. Off. Totally, totally I'm going fine. to rip off tomorrow afternoon. Horse, I've been tracking for a little while now. And finally, finally, Mr Niven is running it in the right grade. Uh, and the horse is Hurstwood as a three-time course and distance winner. Bounced back to form at the uh, track last time out when he was um, a bit unlucky not to finish closer to the winner in a much better grade than he faces today. I think that was a 0-80. to 80. He won this race last year. He's a pound higher. Just looks primed to go well again in its, this year. It's actually a, not a bad race for a 0-65, to 65, to be honest with you. He needs a little luck in running this this horse because he's got a hold up style. But you know what Rippon's like. If you handle it, you handle it. If you don't, you don't. And you know he handles it, this horse. And I think Hurstwood, I'll have a point on the nose on Hurstwood to make it a four time course and distance win. Lovely jubbly. Four to one generally available with the Mull Rennan in the saddle. Hopefully that can do the best for you, mate. And then it, I want I, I want you to win more than any of us this weekend. Yeah, to get to get the full sweep. Yeah, I'm the only one full, in the red. Yeah. Full green. Ah, but you're only three points. A winning weekend for yeah. you. We'll, we'll, oh, no. And we're all in green. <laughs> That'll be like immense. <laughs> Look what a nap's table that'd be. Yeah, yeah Gus, Gustav Andy. Right, that's round one done. Um, I'll kick off round two then. Going to the Royal Lodge. It is the Aidan O'Brien trained Capulet. Uh, two mm. to one. Generally available, I think this is ultra solid. I think that form with Diego Velasquez is going to be very, very strong. The regard they hold that in, but nonetheless, there's a lot of people on social media last time that hold the view that Mr. Heffernan could have done a little bit better on, on Capulet, and it wouldn't be the first time he sort of let the let the one supposed to win win. The form looks very, very strong, of course, because deep one of Paddy Toomey's that's finished fourth and was four lengths further back, uh, came and pissed up in the Beresford. That just tells you how strong that is. Uh, Atlantic Coast was uh, three and a quarter lengths back in third. That w- that was very impressive on debut and a maiden, clocking a good time and a racing post rating of 93. So you can see how strong that form is. And I think, I don't think there's anything not to like. Uh, there's, there'll be no negatives. Ground will be fine. Ryan will, will go handy with it, which is what is ideal for Newmarket. No messing about. Yes, two to one. Very solid. Two points win. Thank you. Uh, Andy, coming to you. Just just to digress slightly from you mentioned Paddy Toomey there with that very impressive one look. Deep, deep one. Um, yeah, yeah, good just a, a little tip for uh, uh for the listeners. Um it, take a look at Paddy Toomey newcomers since twenty sixteen. He's twenty three from eighty seven. Would have actually got you a bet on one look in that particular race. Not that I took yeah. my own advice. The wax the winners above expected is eight point one two. If you back all his newcomers. Since 2016, you would be winning 46 points at SP. So, slight digression there. Irish but, carrots, Andy. Mm, I think that may well may well be. He also does very well if you want to take a look at this with his stable, sw- you know, stable switches as well. So, uh, good trainer, Paddy Toomey, or he's got the right carrots, whichever. Um, we are going to Chester next of all. I'm going to have a bit of a tour today. Um, King's Code. Now, the last time this horse ran. All of those who filled the first four places in the mile handicap that he closed, uh, uh, that he ran in, they all suffered a bit of interference, but King's Code certainly got the worst of it. Now, he was a winner on his debut for David Evans' yard. Got very quiet, the Evans' yard, didn't it? Used to be really mm. a lot more. Oh, that Newbury over seven foot. Still a decent trainer. 
And this this race he ran in last time is a much deeper race over a furlong further off a career high mark. But all in all, I think it's one in the grand scheme of King's Grove's career to um, to mark up highly. I think he would have won if he'd have got a clearer shot of the home straight. He was hampered all the time. His pedigree suggests that it will be at home at further over than a mile, but he's equally effective. Seven furlongs to a mile. He's over seven tomorrow. Uh, on the basis of this run, he should be able to grin off a current rating of 77. I know you need a little bit of Leicester, <coughs> but um, the going's right. I think he's pretty well drawn. Should be able to track the pace into it. Two points win. I share you the confidence on that, Andy. Actually, I, I, it's, a, it's a horse that I, I've got my eye on at the moment. I do like. Yeah. So it's a good choice, in my opinion. That just looking for odds, I think I can see some six to one. Yeah, six to lovely. one, Andy, for yours. Thank you. Take the six to one, lovely, lovely. Yep, two on the nose. Jonas, finish the round. This will finish everything off. I'm in stable switcher mode today. This yeah. is a, another switcher. This is also called Al Jadel in the 450 at Newmarket. This one has gone from Botty to Husey. The, what are you laughing at? The, the Husey switch brought immediate dividends when she won at Lingers in a fairly average mate. But that's only half the story. This one was held in a bit of regard at Botty's and there was a bit of bother over it um, underperforming. It was actually given a thought of entry for the Chesham at one point. Wow. Things just didn't work out there. Anyway, she definitely one that can make up for last tab. 66 rating is plainly ridiculous here. And I think around the 40 to 1 mark, she merits a point each way. Mm, 40s with Paddy's bet fair. Big price, that. Stable debut. Uh, came out and did the biz. And yes. interesting shout. Must look closer at that one. Um, when you're tipping prices, like, especially before the show ends, right? Good stuff, John. That's that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want these nasty punters taking up walls, like right? So, that, <laughs> so lo- lovely, lovely finish to round two. I like it. I'll swing it straight back to Andy for the three right. three pointer. Okay, we're going very, very near to the chest of 528. If that goes off on time, I'll be most surprised. To the new market 525, and if this gets off on time, I'll be really surprised. I think that's my nap on the card. 532 and 19 seconds, but <laughs> I spot the ball. This, yeah, this won't, this won't go off on time. You've got a 34 runner Cambridge here to, to get off on time. Uh, the, the nap every year is that the South Arrowage will never get off on time. <laughs> But uh, the 525 now, I suspect that the seven furlong handicap won by Quinault for a friend of the show, St- um, Stuart Williams, last time, who was recording his seventh handicap win of the year. It was a pretty decent race. And Star of Orion has got some pretty strong place form over the seven furlongs at Ascot. And I just he just caught my eye there. Uh, and three of his wins have come at Newmarket, two at the Gaspit July course, one on the Roly Mile. What caught my attention in his run behind Quino was the fact that he was the only one of the first four home to come from a hold-up position with the winner making all, and the second and third were in the second wave chasing the leader. He finished off the race really well, and the style of one will stay a mile if they did try him in that trip. He's only been he's back at seven furlongs, but I really wanted him to be back at seven furlongs for one of those Ascot back-end races. I think there's one on Champions Day. I think they've got a couple of handicaps there or Newmarket over seven furlongs. And I just had him noted as one, a particular one to note in the next few weeks. So three points on the nose, start of Orion in the uh, Newmarket closer. Yeah, the uh, 5.25 race. Mm, love to give you the fours, but I can't. No, <laughs> um, no they, un- they, they've been bur- the price burglars have been out on this one already, yeah. haven't they? 100 to 30 for you, Andy. Uh, like that's that. with uh, yeah. Hills 888 Unibet at the time of recording. Good stuff, mate. Nice nap and nice reasoning. Jonas? Sunday. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Epsom. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable, isn't it? What's also unbelievable is Will Buick dashing back for the 250 at Epsom. Yeah, interesting. To ride Victorious Street for Simon and Ed Crisford. Now, <laughs> this one caught the eye in what at the time we thought was a rather tasty maiden at Haydock. Now, since then, the front toe have got dicked in a maiden at Newmarket, the condition race at Newmarket, yesterday. Having said that, I do think there were excuses for them, both of them yesterday. 
And I, I'm still inclined to think that that was a good raid in the Now, this is a very strange race in itself anyway. It's the Betfred Derby wildcard condition stakes. If you win, you're in things. Really? Yeah, so you, you get in if you win this. <laughs> derby wildcard? What, so you actually get in? The, yeah, the you get derby. a derby wildcard. Why is there only four entries? Because they're idiots, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here yeah. we go. Um, this horse showed tremendous promise, actually, in this maiden. He was locked away on the inside, couldn't get a run for more than the money, and then ran on like a fucking Comanche near, near the finish. The experience lived on the horse the world ago. And then what we up against? Fucking Charlie Johnston. A nutcase trained by Andrew Baldwin, a fairly average sort from the Carl Burke outfit. I think this is an absolute gimme at two to one, three points win. Not sure I can give you two to one though. Um, <laughs> two <laughs> roll book, two roll books. Well, there's only hills that's priced it up. But oh, we'll bring in a fair price scenario for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm waving the two rule books here, John. One's got your name on it. Well, well uh, I, I'm not. One's as, getting rolled up and showed up my ass. I'm not. As, I'm not as favourable that to John's only Nick that can catch Quentin for that moment. Unless that John. One goes well, we need an algae deli. Yeah, yeah, we need that. In. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> uh, We're cheering on Dicky Hughes. Not often you do that, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> me to finish things off and hopefully finish everyone off. Saturday, back to Saturday, Saturday night for two twenty-five. It's the uh, Chevrolet Park. And the Rick here, the bookmakers aren't very good at, at pricing uh, foreign invaders. Jasna's secret should be favourite. Uh, it's a Rick not to have a favourite. This raider from France, Crystal Sumion in the saddle. Now, Jasna's secret, this this filly is is serious gears. This is she clocked four furlongs for it consecutively under eleven seconds in a last run, and and still one nudged out without any pressure whatsoever, she's fast and she can sustain it, which is important. Remember our new markets road this week? You, you know, yeah, you can win off the pace, but you do need to have that cruising speed. Well, she's got that. And some of these fillies in this race will have had enough for the season. Cherry Blossom, Porta Fortuna, you could argue the favourite relief rally. Is this a one dip to the well too many? I am very, very confident. That Jazz and Secret, I'm not saying will win, but whatever beats her, it will, will win the race. It, it, she's that good. She's a very good filly, serious group one filly. And seven or two with NT and Coral Labrooks is where I'm going for my three pointer. And I'm very, very confident at that. She should be favourite and she should go off favourite. If she doesn't go off favourite, I'll be having plenty on, on the shows tomorrow. So, hope you enjoyed all the best bets there. Hopefully we'll look after you this weekend with some profit, even though there's three on the show. Skeleton crew uh, for, for the <laughs> weekend. But it doesn't matter if we're giving you winners. So there now it's three t- more stun like skeletons as well. <laughs> 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 That's actually true. Uh, That's yeah. probably true, actually, yeah. Fair yeah, enough. yeah, yeah. We, we, we're, not, we, uh, we're, we're not, we're not, we, we couldn't body double for James Fanshawe, could we? No, we'd win podcast tug of war. Anyway. Um <laughs> Right. Podcast fat bastard three. Yeah, yeah. T- oh, t- I, wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind doubling for fan show actually. The bang is missing bang back in the- <laughs> <laughs> Oh Burns. He's been out of form as Burns most of the year, but anyway, yeah. he's showing a bit of life lately. It just reminds me of that Scotch advert, that videotape advert, you know. Yeah. I'm going to Jenny tell you how it's going to be. With Scotch's Jenny Gavin did the voice over, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great, the great copper memory. from Sykes. Yeah, look at that. Isn't it? What facts Corky. we've got on this show? We do all Corky sorts of... The Carly, mm-hmm. the Carly, the yeah. Copper. yeah, we do all sorts. Like, like we do Shakespeare, we've done all sorts on this show. Facts that you would never know. And that's the next one. So thank you, John. Now we know we did the Scotch adverts in the ni- 80s and 90s. Right. Um, coming on to TV action then. Where should we go? We, we'll do HQ first, may as well. One fifty yeah. tomorrow, the Royal Lodge. I've had my say on this, so over to you guys. John, where do you see this? Rather boringly, I was probably just as impressed as you were with Capulet. I think Al Musmack won a decent 
conditions race here, Doc, where he beat Remad and one other that runs against him again tomorrow. I forgot what its name is. But he'll confirm that form, and I think he'll probably be second. But I don't, I don't think he's as good as Capulet. No. What do you think to Jane Jacklin's placing without Vermeer? I think this is totally the wrong target on the second run. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's such a shame because it would have been a load up and get the sister ready to go on the game, wouldn't it? If, uh, Any maiden, yeah. Yeah. Still looked a bit on the leg to me as well on Debbie I, I, I don't think it's a smart move, to be honest. No, she did the same with another one of theirs from the China Horse Club. But we don't know what pressure owners are putting on, but then... Uh, and we put her under pressure for this sort of thing, though, will really. No, no. We like this horse a lot, but I think this is this is an error in placement. I think it's too much too soon. Uh, really two, we, two weeks after you, very green on debut as well. So, do, do you want this out the back, pushed along on quick ground, and not and finding it all happening too quick, and then it and then it started. You could sour it, couldn't you? It, well, it's sim- she did similar with Cracker Brad, didn't she, earlier in the season? Mm. That was Peter Harris's as well. Maybe mm. Peter Harris is putting pressure on. Well, Maybe uh, he likes the I mean, ticket for these big days. 650000 this cost as a oh, as a year. Right. 650000 he's, he's not bothered about spending it now, is he? Well, he's at that age, isn't he? Well, yeah, I suppose so. Can't take it, will you? Carson thinks yeah. he can, though. He won't spend it. Anyway, that's where we are then. Thank you for mm. that. Andy? Uh, I'd probably agree with you guys, actually. Just a few stats on it for people who like those things. All seven, all the last 17 winners have won over seven furlongs or a mile beforehand, so make sure you've done that. Could be Aiden's eighth winner in the race since 1999. Another uh, race he's dominated. Yeah, I, that going back to that Jane Chapel Hyam thing, didn't um, Peter Harris, he won the Cambridge year, didn't he? Katie in 80, remember that? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. I remember it very well. I had me bollocks on Newsman that was second round on the other side. <laughs> Sorry about it's, that, John. Just uh, yeah, remind, that, yeah. remind me of that. Yeah, I, I, the only other one I thought was interesting was Ghostwriter. Look at the, the time that clock to Ascot was pretty decent mm. um, under a penalty. Clive Cox found a bit of form lately, but I didn't like you. I mean, it's not. It's not really my sort of bag, to be honest with you, but Capulet, strong form claims. But the Aiden, I think he had six entered in this, uh, and this is yeah. the selected. So uh, we can take it from right. We're trusting the AOB, as I call yeah, it. Yeah, it, like I said in the thing, it's solid. It's one of them that, you know, if anyone's trying to knock the bet, it's like, well, you can't really at two to one. Six to four, I'd probably knock it, but two to one, I think it's I think it's fair game for all. But you make a good point about Ghost Writer, Andy. Very good time, yes. Yeah, I don't Just, know what you you're a bit more of a time man than I. I don't know whether you had a section upgrade or anything on that that uh, time at Ascot because I thought it was pretty pretty it was pretty decent. No upgrades. It ran to optimum, but but it might find more. But I I, I just felt Capulet like said. Yeah, uh, I respect I respect your opinion though in terms of time, uh, but. Mm-hmm. but I think Capulet's the one. 225, then the Chevrolet Park. Again, I've, I've had my say here. Relief, Relief Rally is favourite at nine to four, and probably in some people's eyes, rightly so. She's won the right races. She's a corker of a filly, toughed it out. Um, so I'd like to get your two views on this. John, again, I'll come to you first. I think there's an interesting one here in uh, Soprano. Mm-hmm. She missed the kick by about. 35 minutes at Salisbury last time. Yeah. And had no chance from missing mm. the kick, basically. She ran a fantastic race. I think she'll be finishing off as well as any in this tomorrow. And I think she'll be the one to chase the frog home. Yeah, did like the Salisbury run and get where you're coming from. Didn't think she had, I, I didn't think in any way, shape or form she'd have the gears of the frog, but no, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I don't want to like poo poo it, but I agree with you. I was taken by Salisbury. And um, we're not going to back the kilt or so. We don't back them. Um, <laughs> Andy, your view here? Oh, a couple of, let's just look at a couple of trends. We've 13 of the last 15 winners won over six furlongs. There's been a couple recently who haven't. Um, uh, Mill Isle in 2019 and Temeverism were the two that, that didn't. Again, O'Brien. Four of the last seven. Yeah, I, I'm rowing in with you in the French thing here. 
I think you, I probably want to take, as much as I don't like taking on shirt horses, and I probably wouldn't lay it. Just wonder whether the relief rally might just have had enough for the year. And it comes here fresh. The, the interesting thing for me is that um, old Sumi, Super Sumi, is riding here. He surely would have had a load of rides at Longchamp on Art Weekend, first day. And um, he's come over here to ride this. So putting two and two together and hopefully coming up with four, I would row in with you and um, Jasna's Secret, who looks, um, from what I've seen, I've only seen the second overall run, looks pretty useful. Mm. Just going back to Jasna's Secret, the impressive thing about her, the fact that she did 1068, 108, 1094, 1084, her last furlong was 12 seconds, but it was eased down, and not, <laughs> not nothing else in the race beat that either that was being ridden along. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so like <laughs> yeah um and uh, seriously this is as good as i've seen apart from the one today what was the one that won today very impressively john's philly that he spotted up before even debut carlos yeah, way. secret carlos yeah. way that's it i've not seen a better one carlos way would be the best and this would be the second best two-year-old philly i've seen with my eyes uh, this season so so yeah that's that's where i stand on the Re relief show. rally is now down as a non-runner apparently Really? Oh, that's disappointing. Yeah. Oh, that it's is disappointing. Literally had a look at that, and I, yeah, she just been pulled out five minutes ago, and uh, the R time rule, now is rule rule four applies. Then rule lovely four job, applies. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. well, so, I, I wanted her to run because I, I genuinely I didn't think that was I, now now that pulled out the self self certificate bad scope. Oh, he's obsessed with scopes. Is the shirt? Mm. Yeah, testing kits every morning and night. Is like only, only if he scopes Maureen before they have an early night. <laughs> what, like a box checker? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's descended into... Yeah, too far, that. Maureen's lovely. Uh, we'll not have anything bad said about Maureen. Three o'clock is the middle part. And uh, this is a race I, I, I think I need... U2's help on here because struggling with it. I, I thought it was priced about right, and I think that's when I start to struggle with races. Van Dijk seven to four, River Tiber five to two. Then comes Task Force eight, Jesso twelve, Lake Forest twelve. Any views here? I thought River Tiber was an absolute sater at Doolittle. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think there was any intention of trying to win that race. No, it would not surprise me in the least if that turned the farm round. Mm. John, did we have a conversation about? Did we say that 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 weren't there to win? It just felt like that yeah. weren't there to win. It definitely wasn't for me. Yeah, a bit like it, after Ascot, it's like Balboa against Drago yeah. in showers after. <laughs> you know, after Ascot win. Yeah, and yeah. like, and they've just brought it back, and it's and it's fought like what well, a club fighter, and it's, it's it's had a club fighter's return. You know, just uh, green exactly. suit motions. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'd go with that. We, we did have a conversation about it. Yeah, River Tiber, I think, like you say, that do not write that off in terms of like, oh, Van Dijk beat it easy at, at uh, Deauville, because um, that might not work out or be the case tomorrow. Yeah. Andy Richmond, your view? And John's sort of taken the words out of my mouth there, because I was going to say, well, the th three of the three of the nine that go to post met in the Mornay last time, didn't they? Van Dijk. Mm obviously won it river tiber was third and jasso who was eighth and i did think going back and watching that race this afternoon uh in amongst well in amongst the uh, gap in the racing from the hedge hoppers at worcester um i did think that that river tiber yeah i think it could probably reverse the form here the one the wild card in this for me is one that hasn't moved stables but it could have done because it's gone from ralph to wraith uh, his, his task force uh, he's the one that could really improve somewhere for me I mean if you look at the bare form he's got a fair bit to find but he's the interesting one for me if I was going to if I was going to play one outside of the front two task force would be the one that track for him last time was was no good yeah you know I often I mean I, I often think some of the shrewdest trainers like the shirt and I've got to give Beckett credit this this season because he's yeah. He's engineered some good marks for his handicappers. And and again, he, he was teaching this horse last time. You know, it, I even said, I think, I can't remember if it was on the pod or to someone else, that 
that the last place I'd have sent this would be ripping, and that's where he sent it. And um, and and I just think there's a lot of that that goes off as if to sort of educate them and bring them on. So you make very good points there. So that's something to look at. Maybe yeah, eight to one might suit. In fact, John actually said it. Look, he John said it. He said. Uh, John's notes, he said, hated the track and he's ready for seven. He deserves yeah. a markup for this as the future lies over further on flatter courses. But then again, they come into a fucking new market of a six. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is that, but I do think whatever happens tomorrow, there is a, you know, there's a nice horse in this waiting to get out of race. And no, I agree. Is, I do do it. I think, when you, as well. you say, it's always a good thing to watch when they take them to Ripon. And they win there, even though the track doesn't suit them, because it always suggests to me that um, that they're a better, you know, they there is they are capable of much better, and they've won despite running up and down the corrugated iron straight. Well, that's why I love the shirt, Andy, because yeah. you get a lot well, of trainers. Do, they'll, they'll they'll just stop them. They'll they'll just yeah. they'll just stop them just to get the mark. The shirt doesn't stop them. He just runs them under unfavorable conditions, but tries. Yeah. All right, they might not be 100% fit. They might be 85, 90, but, but that's the beauty of it, that you can see it's time, you can see it's form, and then it goes to Ripper, and you think, hmm, quandary time. <laughs> but then at least you've got that decision to make because you know exactly. he's not going to stop it. And yeah. and, and that, that's why I've got, I'm full admiration for that team because I think that then, you know, when, like you just said, when they win two and a half lengths, say at Ripper, yeah. and, and, and it's pushed along mid-straight and it, it can't quicken, but it then gets on top late, yeah. and you think, Hmm, that Melrose, <laughs> Melrose time. Here we go, we've yeah. got one. That's the beauty of spotting mm. horses and, mm. and why we enjoy it so much. And yeah. and, and mm. a shirt's a credit to the sport for that. Just smoke blowing on the shirt. It'd be, good to get, it'd be nice to get the shirt on, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. After I've said after I've said uh, uh, you should check Maureen's box. Um <laughs> right, four, three, <laughs> three, three forty new market the game. <laughs> mm. It's terrible, isn't it, John? I'm mm. terrible. Yeah. What a bad show. Right, 3.40 Newmarket, Cambridgeshire time. Come on. This is one of the big handicaps of the year. So what's fucking Davis done? Flown off to Greece. What a cunt. John, <laughs> kick us off. <laughs> right, uh, Cambridgeshire. Well, unfortunately for us listeners, I kind of fancy an old mate of mine of Roger Variables called Akko Nagela, who hasn't fulfilled his promise. But there have been excuses. The run last time at York, nothing really got into it from the back. And he was only beating six lengths in total. They never even got a smack into him for the last two furlongs. The blinkers ought to sharpen him up and get him travelling a bit sweeter as well. I still think he's on a mark that you can... You feel he can improve on this. His, his better efforts have come on a quick surface. And I think something like this with an end-to-end gallop and a lot going on, could bring the best out of him. I think he's the best value of all the unrace, well, like unexposed ones at 28. But mm. the problem being, I've got a lot of pace concentrated more towards the stand side. I thought which that, in that yeah. case mm. would bring in crack shot, eagle as way and majestic as possible savers. Mm. Why don't you like the fav? Because it's fav. Yeah, it's too sharp for me. You don't pack them prices. Like, yeah. like me. Andy, your view on this? I've got a stat against the favourite. Which Ooh, is, cool. I'm not saying I don't like it, but it's just a bit too short for me. I mean, his favourite is very lightly raced. That age group, the three-year-olds, when they've only run once in three months, in the last three months, they've got a one from 26 record, and the winner was Lord North. Exactly, the next uh, Lord North. Well, he, <laughs> if he's the next Lord North, he's going to be a multiple group one winner and hats off if, if he is. But at that sort of price, I can leave it alone. I'm very surprised, and I've already backed this, that John hasn't gone with Liberty Lane here. Well, I have, I have actually backed to Liberty Lane, haven't you, Paul? Yeah. Grand. Uh, uh, well, um, I've, I'm, I've rode in with you after he sank my um, Sonny Liston the other week when Sonny Liston traded at 103 at Donny. <laughs> Um, so I am with Liberty Lane, but the other one I quite like, and just to give you a few more bits and bits and bobs on the race, um, the draw, the last seven winners are all drawn high, 26, 21, 25, 29, 21, 29, and 28. That looks to be the sort of sweet spot. The last 10 years, stalls 21 to 30 are seven from 89. 
25 and 31 mine, aren't they? Lovely. Lovely. Yeah, so I've gone that sort of way with uh, the, the other one that interested me, because I've gone with two three-year-olds, although I respect Crackshaw as well, is um, Tawada. Thought he did really well. He only finished seventh last time out in a really competitive handicap at York. And he got beaten about, what, just under four lengths? Didn't really, but wasn't really that well placed in that race. I, I think he's got the sort of run style and pedigree that he's going to, that, that nine furlongs, which is a bit of a funny trip. It's a bit like the Portland, isn't it, where you run it over five and a half. It's a bit in between. You sort of don't yeah. you get, that's why you get sort of specialists at this this trip. Um, and I thought Tarada had a, a decent chance. They were both just talking, Lee, you were talking about how you sort of bet in these races. I'm always like, I always think it's better to have a bit of a go on these and on the exchange because yeah. looking at the prices of these two, I mean, the bookmakers, I wouldn't have bet with, I wouldn't have bet each way with them. I'd rather have a shoot at the moon at the better exchange prices, which I think both of these will be. In fact, I was amazed when I saw them earlier on how much, how big they were. I think Tawada was out to 30 and it was like 16 with the books and then just rather cover the place, uh, cover the, 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 the win money with a, a bet in the place in the biggest place market I can find on the exchange as well. That's the way I play them. That's a similar tactic to what I do. You're very yeah. similar to me on that. Um, I'm not really that bothered of it. I mean, it, you know, it's nice if they get placed, but I'm not really bothered of, you know, each way. And I can't get on with bookmakers. You know, these people are offering eight, and nine places and 25, you know, whatever. <laughs> I've got no chance of getting on with them. So I'd, ra I'd rather play it. I'd rather play it that way and take the bigger exchange price, um, which you know, well, whilst we're still allowed to bet with Betfair, um, and um, and do it that way. I mean, if you look at them now, uh, Liberty Lane's 25s and Tawada's 32. Yeah, and Tawada was drawn 17 at York over the mile, yeah. which is nearly impossible you watch, to win. If you watch the race, it, it just was never really well placed, and it only got beaten just under you know four lengths, but three and three quarter lengths, it got beaten in seventh. So I thought those two had a, you know, in a race where I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go gung-ho into it, not a 34-runner handicap as it is now um, with one non-runner. Majestic would actually be the first back-to-back -back winner since Prince de Gaulle back in 1970. Lovely stuff. Yeah. For, yeah, for the, for the oldies that. Okay. Uh, I wasn't <laughs> born in 70. Well, I was nine, but... I, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was minus three. Um, I that one too, but there was a gap, wasn't there? Mm, yeah, I think yeah, there was yeah, there was yeah. I saw one of those. What was um? Didn't he win it one year? Then not, and then the year yeah. after. Yeah. What was the name of the horse, John? Baronet. Baronet. That was it. Yeah, yeah, that was it. I think there was another winner of that. There was another winner like that. I haven't been back a little bit. I know the last back-to-back -back winner was Prince de Gaulle, nineteen seventy. Yeah. Wide open race. Pays your money, takes your choice. They're my two against the field. And if I had to stick a third in, um, respecting Lee's opinion, it would be crack shot. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he, he going the right way. As long um, as Georgia, Georgia doesn't have any fish and chips tonight. No. Well, we'll do for time purposes. I'm going to cover long champs Sunday. So, chaps, have you any other business on the two TV races we haven't covered, which is Chester and Haydock, and or long chomp? I can on, be on Saturday. I, I can be very brief about the, the other two TV races, the, the British ones. Uh, Chester, quite fancy Zealandia uh, for Ian Williams. He had three into this running two, but Zealandia, Zealandia should get a good pace to chase at Chester. I like Ian Williams' horses at Chester as well. And Haydock in the dash, which could be more of a slog. Our old friend Mundamedge is running. I'm sure the producer's got that one in the tractor. <laughs> Um, I did story. think that, that on the ground, Manila Scouse has got a good, decent chance, but the, the price has been savaged on that one. One who, who's also getting backed as well is Spoof, if he came back to form. Last time out of Chester, he was force wide. He was a bit keen. If you take it on his penultimate run, then he's probably got a decent chance here, the old boy Spoof. And he will like the ground, but that was, uh, that was the two other TV races. Mm. Yeah, good stuff, Andy, which is more than I can offer. <laughs> John, have you got anything to add? No? Absolutely not. No, I've got nothing to add for Long Chomp tomorrow, only that it, 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 be very careful because the racing post never update the going. They don't even update it on the day of the race on the, on the site. If you look at turf tracks, the Long Chomp current going description is 8.1, which is bang smack in the middle of good. 
and and that was this morning. So if you consider they've had a 22 degree day sunny weather today, and then there's no water in between now and and Arc and Longchamp uh, all all weekend they, they are the Triumph. So don't be fooled that there's any cut in the ground. There won't be. Tomorrow will ride good. I think it'll ride top side of good as well, for about 8.5. It warmed up by a point. It was 7.6 yesterday. It's 8.1 today, which means it's probably going to be about 8.5 tomorrow, which is top, yeah. which is sort of good, nice, good ground, you know, good summer racing ground. Yeah. And then Sunday, 26 degrees, it's going to be what? Uh, probably nine. So, so that then you're into good to firm, to genuine good to firm territory. So True Shan is a no. True Shan needs genuine. Cutting the ground to be at his very best. I'm not saying it can't win. I'm just saying, why Why are you taking five to four tomorrow in the Cadran? Why? Because you're seeing soft in the racing purse. Anyone that logs in, going, oh, soft. It's not. Check turf tracks going report. It's more, and this was first thing this morning. So imagine Probably like... Well, really. well, yeah, you got King Kong. Take it out, weren't he? Ten minutes before or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Emily Dickinson will be two to, two to five. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so just just be wary of that when you're playing tomorrow. It's not soft. There will be no soft in that description this weekend. I can assure you, unless of course it rains, which there is very little chance of that according to the forecast. That you know, you know, what forecasters are like. But it, as it stands, we're looking at a fast ground long long chomp weekend. So with that at foot, then let's go to Sunday's cards, which are long chomp. We start off on the television coverage, ITV4 are covering four. Pre Abbey is not covered by ITV4. Uh, no, like because they've got that crap Arab race on in the middle of the fucking card. It looks, I mean, I, it says ITV. Are ITV covering that? No, it's not oh, begun. Yeah. There's a time to let the dog out and or get the dog in and go and make a cup of tea. Yeah, they, they actually are. I mean, that's because Qatar sponsor it. So, I mean, it's amazing you stick that in over Abbey, isn't it? It's it, yeah. that that that's just bullshit. It's BS. But look, it's their money. They're paying. They get the choice, Sweet. right? The one fifteen then that kicks us off with the ITV four coverage on Sunday is the Grand Criterium for the Colts and Phillies. If Phillies want to run in yeah. this, and uh, Bervatier is current market leader at three to one. We oppose Rosalian. Is Rosal- Rosalian's in this, John? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can see, yeah, uh, but gets a, t- a trap 10 draw, terrible draw. John, we we think Rosalian's been flattered, don't we? We do, and we looked as though we were right 10 weeks ago, so yeah, there's not really any, there weren't really much excuse for it, maybe, maybe a bit keen, but but. I'm, I'm still comfortable with him. Um, he was flattered by his Ascot run. Was it? Was it so, Ascot? Ascot Prince Charles chariot uh, yeah, tire yeah, track yeah. for? Tire track for. <laughs> I'm watching for that next year. If the, wagon, if, for them, yeah. wagon. I'm, I'm watching for wagon for. Watch the tire tracks and watch the watch the horses <laughs> that are on the tire tracks. Well, look at red car like the stalls one yeah. to fix. When, yeah. when the doc, doctor's cars used to mm. up the inside well, all the time. We're going to have to go with unquestionable here, aren't we? Seeing as how we know jack shit about Bovatier. I do know a bit about Bovatier. Yeah, right. I, I, I'm not I'm not bouncing. Right. I don't think I think it is what it is. It's group yeah. three, group two. I think unquestionable can beat this. Yeah. Personally, John, what do you make of the... Um, the last run for questionable? Unquestionable. Are we thinking this? it was just I a weird race? Really? <laughs> <laughs> it? But it was a weird race, yeah? It definitely was a weird race, yeah. Question- Which was question- oh, questionable. Yeah. <laughs> it was questionable for unquestionable. Will there yeah. be questions to be answered tomorrow, John, about unquestionable? Well, you never know, do you? It's in the air. <laughs> <laughs> John, if you were trainers so it middle and like and 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 somebody stuck a mic in your face afterwards and said, uh, um, "I've got I've got a question on this horse, John." No, 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 no. It, it's unquestionable. Yeah. <laughs> he'd be, do, he'd be doing a, he'd be doing a to Michael, wouldn't he, and edging away. Oh, John would be like stout, yeah. mega. Yeah, yeah. yeah. John would yeah. actually John'd treat him like stout and look yeah. at him gone out. Yeah, and Chapman out on the watching line. Uh, which, <laughs> yeah, which is yeah, always yeah. fun to see. The, the one yeah. thing about unquestionable, didn't he get upset in the stalls last time out? Didn't he bang his head? It's, it is a worry. You know, like th- there are little issues. If they start doing that and they remember it, it mm. kind of the stalls oh, well, are worse. Well, we can get, really, if it's it. 
isn't the um, isn't the interesting one the scaffolders native american great draw but it hasn't it is interesting in that mm. the, the untapped potential mm. um, no fancy i've seen her around there myself eh? <laughs> no i've seen her parashar yeah it's still nine yeah not maybe not for me on that yeah i look for an experienced lurker myself like eh? Anything mm. to add on that? We, we, it's sort of a an half arse race, isn't it? It's one of those it's, races that you don't need to you don't need to get involved in. No, exactly. Right, big drifter time then. One fifty in the Marcel Boussac. Darn A should be a huge drifter. Huge. Stall ten, right? Mm. Yeah. Of ten, it's not going to be soft. Nowhere near soft. It's going to be yeah. probably good to firm on Sunday. Yeah. Carl Burke himself says. The one that it works with, the other one that's really good, Fallen Angel, that had beat this on homework, et cetera, et cetera, which tells you that she needs the ground. So if anyone's thinking, oh, will she be effective on fast? Well, the fact that Fallen Angel kicks it into touch on the mm. gallops tells you that she needs the mud. And from stall 10 with Rusty Leon, I'd rather right. have a dose of AIDS for a day. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say a dose of Rusty Lee for a minute. Well, yeah, and that, and that as well, yeah, yeah. With what was her name that used to do keep fit? They were Mister Motivator, Lizzie. Lizzie. They were Lizzie before Mad Lizzie, Lizzie. Yeah, yeah the Mad Green Lizzie. Goddess, you, the Green Goddess, you mean? Yeah. Mad the Golden Age of Telly and Diamond fawning over Bobby Ewing on national TV, while the Luton chairman Nick Owen. Yeah, you do uh, mm-hmm. that TV because I'm Diamond, though. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm Diamond, yeah, yeah. But I used to like Roland Rat and Kevin straight after. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin the yeah yeah Kevin the gerbil weren't it uh, good stuff them days John so that's my view if Darnation is anything like well, under five on exchanges it's gained stripe from me big stripes like the ones that you, you you're out all day and you know you, you're on Guinness them sort of stripes and you're on your underwear John got to back off for a singer if you're having a bet then eh? do you think I mean like, like I do like her but and, and it was impressive last time. But did you see how the second were ridden under Ed Waiter? The trouble is with these, I mean, there's none of your usual Marcel Boussac winning owners have any runners. No. no. Normally you can back worth him at three with impunity in this, can't you? And mm. they're nearly always in the three. They haven't gotten out this year, so we're a bit stumped. Yeah. Oh, good mm. so, mm. Andy, anything to add? Not really, no. If somebody forced me, I'd probably be a, as long as it's a relatively sensible price, I'd probably be a layer of Darnation. And if you had to back one, not for a singer, but said with no real enthusiasm. Indeed. The Darnation, mm. the, the big lay day paydays, that's what we're doing mm. in the 150. Mm. Uh, forget the Arab race, we're not doing that. No, 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 no. The, the arc, the big one, the one that's worth talking about. This is the Ace Impact show, or is it not? And before I come to you guys, uh, I would like to point out that obviously the ones that are going to be most disadvantaged by the ground are Hookham, Bay Bridge, and probably continuous to a degree. You've just won a ledger on a bit of soup, and now you're coming back to an arc that's going to be likely on quick ground, so it wouldn't be for me. If I had to pick one with a gun to the head, it would be Westover, but that's not not with confidence. So, John, coming to you first. I'll give you two against the field. Mm. Through seven seas, the tank or horse. Yeah, I'll, that mm. run behind Equinox, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is, he didn't get the best of runs. And uh, he's right in this on racing post ratings. As I say, these lads all of get overlooked, you know, I think it's... Because of how they treated Stephanie Beecham in the 80s. <laughs> and the other one would what, be... Seal, and seal clubbing on that. Uh, seal clubbing and they eat the things we like, don't they? So, <laughs> um, also, the other one I like was Wanesto. I think he's a ridiculous price. He saw out the 12 furlongs in Japan last year. He didn't get the trip in the act, but that was on the soup. But he can run well here off a decent draw. If you forgive Ireland, which could have been a bad trip, strange water, whatever, you look at the start of the season when he ran that promising race behind in Spiral. Mm. I think 41 is a shocking price. Mm. Great, I agree. It's massive. It is. I, I like what you're saying. I like, I like through seven seas at prices. Mm. 
on Esther, yes, I can give credence to that. It, uh, it looks the type of arc where, you, you know, everybody could be going on saying, well, let's go fucking forget about that, isn't it? And they're two that would be typical results of the best forget about that arc, aren't they? Really? Is it one thing where we could either, either say Ace Impact wins it by a rap, rapid turn of foot and, and, and impressively, or it could be won by nearly anything in this? I'm not convinced Ace Impact wants this trip. No, the speed it showed up in the uh, in the French derby. Yeah. Yeah. Last time out, it wasn't gagging for another two furlongs. No, it wasn't. I agree, John. Yeah, we'll take that on board. Um, and it, so for me then, listening to you, and I'm not come to Andy yet, but it's Westover through seven seas and on Esther in our little portfolio. Right, Andy, are you adding to that portfolio? I do, I do like on Esther, but I have backed one and I backed it earlier in the week. Admittedly, I think it might need a little bit more cut in the ground, but that's not conclusive. 19 of the last 25 arcs have been won by horses drawn one to eight. 15 of the last 21 been drawn uh, won by those drawn one to six. Stalls two, two to six are the real sweet spot. They've uh, been particularly lucky. Six wins apiece since 1980, and they finished 1 2 last year when Alphanista beat Fadini. So I'm going to go with Feed the Flame, who I think is an interesting horse. Um, I think he, he did really, I think he did really well, um, even last time out when he got when he got beaten. I, I think he's, he's got a bit of ground to make up on his ace impact on their pre de jockey club form, but. I think the trip here is going to suit him far better than it will suit Ace Impact. He was beaten last time out, but that was by... He was just poorly positioned off a really slow yes. pace. Dropped out, and yeah, yeah. I just, I just think he was... I just think he's a, a better... He's a better horse than... Uh, he's a better horse than that. Um, and if you look at his form figures at this track, three ones and a two. Sumion's one on him twice. Sorry, he won the race, won this twice, isn't he? Yeah, this is looking for his third win in this race. I, I must admit, I wouldn't mind a drop of rain. I'm not going to get it, but I thought he looked decent value at around. I took some tens, and there was a little bit of twelves earlier as well, so I gobbled that up as well. I think you'd be lucky to get twelves at home. You might just scam a bit of tens somewhere, but I think he, he's got the potential to be one of the movers. Um, Ace impact. I, I, I can let him go at the price, and I'm not sure about the trip. Continuous, no ledger winners ever won, come on and won the arc. I'm quite surprised they've done it that way, really. Hook him, I hate the draw. Westover, I just think he looks a bit slow sometimes. Um, mm. Through seven seas, I thought was interesting. He would be another one on, on my list. So my list would be feed, uh, feed the Flame, Through Seven Seas, and... I do respect one Esther. I didn't realise he'd gone to forties. I've got about as much chance of getting that forties with bet three six five as going to the pissing moon. But um, if you can snap it up, I would. Good stuff. That's our arc fancies. Then we're going. We, we're against the Fathom. We're against Hookham, Bear Bridge, and the horses that want cut. Like they run Bay Bridge in the wrong race, didn't they? I told you where they yeah. should have run it. Yeah, <laughs> listen to the, the podcast. There'll be many podcasts out there tonight thinking it's soft ground. I mean, I mean the fact that I think Mega somebody tweeted me today and said Mega Nichols had said on IT racing, oh the, the French always put plenty on it'll it won't yeah. be it won't be quick. What the fuck is she talking about? Um, you know, I mean it's eight point one this morning, first thing. So and there's mm -hmm. no they will they've even confirmed there will be no more watering, no non zero. Yeah. So what's she on about? An absolute idiot. There we go. On that footing, anyway. I'm not saying Meg's an idiot totally, but on that subject, she didn't know what she's talking about. The three. Can I have a little mention? Can I have a little mention of the Abbey? Of course, you can. Yeah, no, no, there no. Might, there might just be a little. There might just be a little angle angle into uh, into this because the draw has been a really big factor in this race. Apart from the fact you can't see the pissing race and you've got no yeah. idea where they are. Um, but stalls one to five have filled really well in this at big odds. And it might just be worth having a look at those, especially in the win and place mark, especially in the win market on Betfair, maybe the place market or each way with the books for the extended places. The five lowest drawn are Padika, your old favourite, Lee, oh, Pontos, Tudo Burn, Curdos and Butamont. Now, Pontos was second in a Group 3 here last time out in a much smaller field. He's been sixth and seventh in this race. His best placing was he was sixth. He came from stall 17. So he might have a bit of a chance, but 
But I tell you what, Kurdos uh, around twenty to one wouldn't be the worst poke in the world. And Huge. I'd even have a stab at Padika. If you look at the last what three or four years, last was it last year they would the first four home was seven, one, eight, and three in an eighteen runner field. Twenty twenty one they were five, two, nine, and ten in a fourteen runner field. 2020, 20, uh, 2, 10, 4, and 8, and 11 runner field. In 2019, 3, 1, 4, and 5 in a 16 runner field. The last winner from a double figure draw was Mabs Cross in 2018 from Stall 13. And the previous year, they were 2, 4, 12, and 10 in a 13 runner field. So it might just be worth having a little stab at those drawn really low. You could probably just extend it a bit. And it might even be worth just having a really stupid full cast or even a tri cast. Indeed, and it's a shame they have it on, on, on ITV4 to be honest because it deserves to be, but that's the way it is. Us paupers have to watch it on Sky and listen to the idiots yeah. there. It might be might be that Claude they get on John in studio, you know, uh, you're Claude. I think it's love him, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, hey, I give you the favorite, yes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, would have, that would have a very good chance. Mm. That, that, that sounds Indian. So, the 350 long champ is the pre la, pre de la opera. Not the foreign. Mm. That's to finish the ITV coverage. Thanks, Andy, for those stats, buddy. Uh, Blue Rose Sen, nine to four. Do you know what? I had a I had a horrible sort of thing. I was studying this thinking this was a mile for some reason. And I was yeah. all over this drop back in <laughs> trip for Blue Rose yeah. Sen, thinking, oh my God, this is this is actually what Blue Rose Sen wants. Yeah. Mile two. Is, <laughs> she, 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 she and it's not, it's a mile two. Obviously, she didn't get the mile and a half last time. She probably wouldn't have, she'd have won at Goodwood, John, wouldn't she? But for idiots. I think, I think, I think so. But this is fair enough, isn't it? But that's the thing with it, right? I don't understand. They've tried to stretch her out. And and I've I've gone back through all the timings and everything. And everything says to me she's got pace to burn. Seven furlongs a mile is fine. But they've, they've gone 10, 12, 10, 10, 12. 10, the drop back in trip's going to suit, but... I'm just disappointed where they've campaigned her. But so, John, have you any view on this? Not really, other than it's far enough for Blue Rose Sen. Mm. But at least yeah. the ground's better. The ground's better. She's got speed. I uh, she's got stall one. He's not gonna have to move on and just sit and hope for a gap. I think I think I think she goes probably close and is the right fav. Mm. But but I do want to see her back to a mile, I'll be honest. Yeah, um, not getting the bracket. Yeah. Andy. Well, I did like Jana Rose, but I yep. don't like the draw in stall 12. I thought she was a little bit overpriced, but I don't like the draw in stall 12. You could certainly make a case for uh, for um, Baby Joseph runner, couldn't you? Lumia yes. Rock. Consistent. Yeah. From stall three, usually up with a pace, finds, tough filly. You know, if you want, you know, you know she's good, you know she's gonna stay. You could certainly make you could certainly make a pretty good case for that. Um, He's a rare thing, a reliable silly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Headgear seemed to help out last time out when she won the what was it, the group yeah. two, the Blandford Stakes. I just thought that at the prices from the from the trap she is, that wasn't yeah. the, that wasn't the that wasn't that wouldn't be the worst that wouldn't be the worst play in the world in that in no, that particular race. Right. <laughs> If you just think Blue Rose send, you know, two to one, nine to four, and you've often said it on the on the bulletin in the mornings, Lee, when you're back in at that price, you want all the ticks, don't you? Every and tick. You're not quite you're not quite sure there. So I did like Jana Rose, but I don't like the draw. But but sevens, sevens, four places with, with quite a few books. Lumia Rock. I tell you what, you could you could do there, you could have a right bit of fun. You can stick her in each way doubles with the five low draws in the abbey. Yeah, there you go. That'd be a giggle, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think I think the uh, the Abbey, the most places you can get at the moment, Sky Bet and Paddy's are going. Well, there's quite a few Betfair doing five places. Yeah, uh, and I think the five I quoted: Pontos is sixteens, Kurdos is about fourteen, sixteen, eighteen around that. Butamont's twenty eight. Padikas are ridiculous forties with hills, but they're only going four places. And Tudo Bem's fifty with them. Uh, but they're only going four places. But you could certainly have a bit of fun there. 100 mm. quid speculated you can win a yeah. There you go, listeners. That's a lovely potential filthy little each-way double <laughs> multi uh, yeah. to shaft your local bookie or your online bookie. 
on the side. They took it as well, wouldn't they? They took it by mistake. Yeah, they <laughs> took it straight up the rear with that one. <laughs> Absolutely. So, a good show. And we've pointed some good stuff out and some confidence shown. So, folks, we're going to round it off there. Thank you, John and Andy, for your contribution. That's all from us. And we're back on Sunday talking more rubbish. Bye for now. <laughs>